What's going on everyone? How are you today? Or tonight? Or wherever you are time zone wise? I started the stream a little early because why not? That's what I get to do. I get to decide these things. I uh, hope you are having a wonderful week. You can see the real star of the show down. Try and get my finger. Oh, there. She's, she's the real star. Let's face it. Um, I, f I figured she should be in the stream. You know, since she doesn't normally get to be, but now she has a spot. Anyway, uh, we are going to be talking a couple of different things this evening. Probably kind of a short stream because news has been very thin. We don't really have much to talk about. But uh, a couple of pieces of, uh, I thought were interesting, articles on pit to pit lending. And also... I went through some statistics. I remember uh, a week ago or maybe two weeks ago, we talked about statistics pages on peer-to-peer -peer lending companies and the kind of information that they provide to us about their history and um, or sometimes lack of statistics in some cases. But I decided to go through some of the companies that we speak about I kind of just um, make a little spreadsheet on the statistics, the defaults, what kind of returns um, investors have seen, and um, what kind of losses these peer-to-peer -peer companies have taken a hit on as far as uh, with loans. And some of them are, some of the information is a little bit imperfect, but I did put together a cool little slideshow, which is going to go through some of those statistics and um, what I did was go back to 2019, which I think talking about three, three slash four years of information, which I think is relevant because also that was pre the vid and then post vid, which I give, think gives a good um, smorgasbord of statistics for that period. And I went ahead and did a little digging. So hope you'll find this enjoyable please hit that thumbs up if you can and i hope you enjoy the content Let's say a quick hi to every body in the stream where is my chat here we go hi dave dawson first today patty is uh, here gilfalan patty i always want to say gilligan i don't know from that tv show i used to love when i was a kid Gil gilligan's island yes i am here patty i think so I pinch myself Peter Vincent Leatherhead, uh, you are in France, Patty. Paul is here in Kenilworth, of course. Colin Perry in the Peak District. Mark Mason, good evening, Lawrence and everyone. Good evening to you, Mark Mason. Hope you are having a good week. Richard Weber, RW. Still don't have a nickname for you. Alan Stratford, the Strat. We're going to call you the Strat. You are coming from a holiday cottage in Perog, Pembrokeshire. That sounds pretty, but it's nice out there. Paul in Stockport. Another pretty place, maybe, is it? Stockport near Manchester. In the UK, George in, uh, from Bridlington. Mike Powell is here, of course, Southampton. Uh, we got the Cayman Islands, who is out lion fish hunting. Chimp O'Naughty in Cambridge. Very nice to see you. Um, and Paul New says, when do you think, what do you think about the ETH merge? Uh, speaking of Ethereum, we had the big Ethereum merge that happened, would have been uh, sort of morning, early morning, UK time, late US time. And um, to be honest, I don't think you're really going to see any difference at the moment with really what that means. It's now Ethereum cryptocurrency has moved away from electricity mining, which is going to uh, be better for the environment, supposedly. But, um, you know, I think... All of cryptocurrency has dropped today. I don't think that has anything to do with the Ethereum merge. I think the Ethereum merge will not really make much difference probably for another year. Um, seeing those Ethereum fees dropping for transaction costs. And I think the cryptocurrency drop is likely just because of the stock market uh, being in the red again. So... Um, yeah, it doesn't really impact, I don't think, much. The good thing is the merge went through without uh, problems, which was one big concern was when the system changed, the softwares were upgraded, what was going to happen, and thankfully there were no issues, so that was a positive. 
And I kind of thought that the Ethereum price and the cryptocurrency market would take that as a positive and we would see a green day today. And I think if the stock market had seen a uh, green day, like the ban green day, uh, I think the, yeah, we would have seen different results. But anyway, if you're a long-term cryptocurrency like I am, these small term ups and downs don't really make a difference to, to long-term investing, kind of like stocks and stuff. So, but let's get right into, maybe I should pull up the chat on my phone. Should I do that? The problem is that I got to take my phone off of airplane mode and people, uh, people call. Oh, hang on one second. Let's see, no, I don't want that. Oh, there's the queen on YouTube. No, hang on. Here we go. Okay. Let me pull up the stream here and I can keep an eye on your chat in case you have any interesting comments because you always do, right? There we go. Let me turn that down. Cool. Pull up the comments. Doing it on the fly. Okay, cool. So uh, let's do, talk about a little bit of news that I think is uh, definitely affects peer-to-peer -peer lending for sure. Let's pull this up. Boom, boom. Here we go. Small and medium enterprises say banks won't lend to them now. This uh, is very impactful to the pit of lending world because it means that uh, more to more SMEs, small and medium enterprise businesses will use pit to peer lending as a form of finance because they are saying that a quarter of UK businesses that the banks will not lend to them. Uh, according to new research from FinTech Sonovate, businesses are increasingly turning to alternative finance amid the cost of living crisis. The invoice financing provider found in the survey that 26% of business leaders have had difficulty accessing finance from mainstream banks, while 38% said the banks don't understand their business needs, and 41% think that the bank lending policies haven't kept pace with uh, modern business needs. Uh, this is kind of an old problem that if you are a business owner and you walk into a bank, you're going to have a very difficult time getting lending. In most cases, it's very slow. It's a very archaic process, something that peer-to-peer -peer lending companies like Assets Capital are trying to really change and I think are doing a good job in some cases of changing it. Um, so yeah, SMEs are going to continue really turning to peer-to-peer -peer lending and that creates more opportunities as a lender because you're going to see more and more loans ramp up. And I believe I saw an a email from Assets Capital saying they had a good supply pipeline of new loans coming in now that they've uh, started lending again. I think this article really just puts the point on that that peer-to-peer -peer lending is very very well positioned in the SME space to uh, provide access funding to small and medium enterprises oh by the way before I forget next week on Thursday we have a special guest on the stream let me pop this up for you here we go George Huntley I know we've talked about uh, the money platform right up there George, it's very hard because everything is backwards on my screen. There we go. George Huntley right there. He is the uh, head of the money platform. He's going to be here live next Thursday at 7.30 UK time. So don't forget to put it on your calendar. Bring your questions. We're going to be talking about peer-to-peer -peer lending. Maybe we'll ask some tough questions. Who knows? George is uh, ready to take them on. Come on the stream. Tell you all about the money platform. I'm very interested to learn more about this company actually because it was something I had considered possibly lending through. So looking forward to that. George next week. Let's turn you off, George. As much as uh want to see a picture up there. We'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for agreeing. And then um a couple of other people will be coming up probably likely now in October, but we're just trying to finalize those dates. Again, these people are very busy, so Sometimes it's quite difficult. Anyway, anywho, let's go back to the uh, to the news. Uh, of course, our uh, Her Majesty the late Queen Elizabeth peer to peer lending paid tribute to the Queen. Um, 
A couple of nice quotes here. Assets capital deeply saddened by the passing of the queen. Truly remarkable woman. Grateful for the extraordinary service that she gave to the UK and the Commonwealth. Folk to folk, deeply sad, and also, oh, it's almost like they they uh, copied assets capital. They were also deeply saddened by the Queen's death. She was an unwavering example of calm and const constancy. For us, I don't even know what that word means. Hey, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. What does constancy mean? Anybody know? Uh, may she forever rest in peace. Yes, I think she she will. Crowd to fund is deeply saddened also to hear about the passing and expresses their condolences. And Cufflink is deeply sad. Look, look at this. Uh, look at this consistent quotes from all the peer to peer lighting companies being deeply saddened. Uh, Cufflink said at this time, "Our thoughts with the royal family. Her, the Majesty had an extraordinary reign. It was an inspiration throughout the globe. Throughout the globe." Here at Cufflink, we join a nation in mourning. Capital Rise also deeply saddened. Blend Network, they share their heartfelt thanks for her service to our nation. A remarkable life, incredible legacy, and an inspiration to so many. Lone Pad, deeply saddened. Easy Money, uh, they are mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth. Vestum Fund sends deepest condolences. Anyway, you get the idea. Everybody... Uh, very sad about the passing of Queen Elizabeth the second now we have a new boss in town King Charles the third we'll see how he does this is an interesting article here investor dumps advisor for less emotionally draining peer-to-peer -peer lending I always like articles like this because it really is the story of an average uh, Joe and Mike says uh, constancy is dependable. Thank you. I learned a new word today. I don't. I do not claim to know it all, but this article shows that this guy Simon Myers, he's a 57-year-old teacher from Brighton. He ditched his financial advisor and switched to less emotionally draining peer-to-peer -peer lending and become, after becoming ha unhappy with the level of returns and service from traditional finance. You know, this is something I often bang on about in the financial thing website i've told holly the dog this that she doesn't need a financial advisor she could diy it however there is one thing that you know when you diy invest there does come some emotional uh, roller coaster ups and swings that can really affect your decision making right here this article says it he switched to a less emotionally draining way of investing Initially, I had a financial advisor who was supposedly helping me with what to do with my savings. That led me to realize I only got to see him once a year. The products weren't always the best thing for me. And that made me wonder if I can do this on my own. Myers went on a couple of courses on stock market investing and spread betting in 2008. It's kind of risky. Made money by purchasing bank stocks at a cheap price after they crashed. That's smart. He began seeking a more certain return and began investing in peer-to-peer -peer platforms. I'll begin with Rate Setter and um, then Cufflink because of a good cashback deal. Now he has more than 300 grand invested in peer-to-peer -peer lending using both manual and auto invest products alongside. And I think this is an important point right here. Alongside his teacher's pension, stocks and shares, ISA and investments in art, highlighting the need and importance to diversify. Do not put all of your eggs in one basket. Now, I like this line right here. He said, peer to peer lending offers less work on my part and it's less random. With stocks and shares, you have to maintain an eye on your portfolio and you have to make decisions about when to pull in and out. Stock market investing is emotionally draining. So you have to be as neutral as you can, but that's not easy when dealing with money. He recognizes, again, importantly, that there are risks with peer-to-peer -peer lending. And as long as an investor is diversified across different loans, that is unlikely that everything goes bust. Thank you for the... Uh, the my, my read listeners are theosauruses. Enduring, unchanging, and constant. Cool. So there we go. That's what we learned. So yeah, peer-to-peer -peer lending can be a really 
uh, I think less emotional way to invest in stocks. But if you are at the butt end of one of these com Pittsburgh lending companies going out of business, that is pretty emotionally draining, I would say. But if you diversify across many companies and many loans, you're likely not going to get so impacted if something does go uh, wrong. Now, speaking of uh, companies and statistics, let's go right into the little slideshow that I have created for you and for your viewing pleasure. Here, these are peer-to-peer -peer lending statistics with one caveat that we have added Lend Invest in there, which is not really peer-to-peer, -peer, but I still kind of put them in the peer-to-peer -peer lending family um, just because of how I've covered them over the years. This is returns, defaults, and losses, 2019 and onwards. And I put in most cases because some of these companies do not list individual years of returns. And um, sometimes they don't actually list what their history of returns has been at all. So there's going to be some cases in, this, in these numbers that you'll see where I wasn't able to fill that out. So we did an estimation. And... Um, yeah, I'll explain that as I go through. Anyways, here we go. First of all, Assets Capital. Now, this is a company here that doesn't publish, as far as I could tell, their returns historically. Um, probably because they have so many different products. And it's been hard to really understand what those returns historically have been for Assets Capital. So what I did was put down what, personally, my accumulative returns have been through Assets Capital throughout the entire time that I've had the account, which has uh, been actually just 3.6%. So not the best, really. Defaults of 2.97% and losses of 1%. This is an average, so I went from 2019 to year to date of 2022 and kind of averaged it out between those years. In most cases, assets capital returns on the low side for me personally. I know other people have had very different results Again, it depended on what loans you invested in, um, whether you had good or bad loans, but my returns have been relatively low. But their defaults have been uh, 19 to 2022, pretty, um, I would say, reasonable, and then losses at just 1%. Assets Exchange, returns. Um, again, another company that doesn't really post what their returns have been but as you know with assets exchange it's not that difficult to figure out because most of their loans are paying sort of five percent to mid five percent so i put their returns five percent ish and then defaults at zero percent and losses at zero percent now assets exchange one of the companies i think is really making a good headway they have a solid offering they also do good things for the community because they're providing housing for people that need housing. So, and I, I didn't add every company on this list, by the way, because um, it was a lot to go through. I also didn't put LoanPad on here because LoanPad, um, I put it. I didn't put it on here because they don't have any defaults. They don't have any losses, and their returns are a little bit difficult to figure out because they don't have a statistics page that shows the historical returns either. Uh, but I'll talk about loan pad a little bit too once we get through this. Blend Network, this is a cumulative return from Inception because they do not list year to year what the returns have been on their statistics page. But you can see cumulatively very, very high 9.35% average per year with 0% defaults and 0% losses. Very, very impressive. Crowd Property, 744 percent in returns and um, they've defaulted uh, 14 loans have been into to default I didn't have the numbers and percentages for that one so I don't really know what that percent number is zero percent losses again crowd property one of these companies that motor along one thing I will say is when it comes to default um, these default numbers can really change from year to year because um, defaults tend to drag out for a while especially if loan terms are three years, four years, five years, you're going to see these default numbers really fluctuate a lot between different companies. So just because, uh, say, Crowd Property has 14 loans that have defaulted, they tend to do relatively shorter 
one year time period alone so you might see a little bit more defaults that again doesn't mean just because it defaulted that it's been a loss or the loans written off it just means that it's past due the fca um, considers a defaulted loan six months overdue so different companies have different ways that they actually classify defaults and what they are so i'm doing a very general um, number analysis of what actually defaults are for these different companies so that's what crowd property lists in their statistics we got folks to vote another company that doesn't list individual annual returns at all so uh, just going off of what their website says it's about a six and a half percent per year estimate default to 1.56 percent and losses at zero percent again that is 2019 to present date cufflink 6.78 percent on the returns and that's average over that is self-select only i did not um, calculate it for the auto loan products because personally i only do self-select 6.7 percent average 6.78 percent defaults 1.03 percent losses at zero uh, percent so good amount of zero uh, percent losses which is a really good thing to see uh, these companies are keeping them down to very very minimal amounts landlord invest very poor information on that website didn't have any information about the returns at all statistically and defaults at 1.75 percent losses um, no information about that there either so come on landlord invest let's let's do better i'm going to reach out to uh, the boss man over there so we can get some more statistics from them lend invest returns 5.29 percent that was on my own personal account they get they don't list uh, individual year-to-year -year returns to be able to average it out so i just took this from my account 5.29 percent that has been i think about five maybe coming on six years so pretty good higher on the defaults uh 2019 and on 5.81 percent but uh, lend invest is very good with their default handling uh, they tend to keep uh, really on top of things and they have loss of just 0 0.28 percent lend invest is a big time lender they have pretty pretty high um, lending volume so those numbers aren't really that bad when you consider that prop land look at this returns on average 8.94 percent and defaults just two loans and losses of 311 pounds um, uh, and that's cumulative throughout 2019 onwards good job prop land keeping their returns low unbolted doesn't show historical returns we estimate from what they tell us eight percent i don't know what your experience has been whether you are in that eight percent range default 7.34 percent cumul cumulative that's from inception of when the company started writing loans because they don't list statistics individually per year um, unbolted default is going to be much higher than other companies because of the nature of their pawn broking gold and jewelry loans and things like that so that's a, actually a very, very good default rate considering what they are doing. Now, the interesting thing here is the losses, they're actually plus 30.8%. We talked about this before that every uh, one pound that goes into default with Unbolted, they have managed to average accumulate one pound 30p back. So they are the only company that I've seen that posts a plus in their losses so there aren't actually any losses they're coming out on top which is pretty cool mike says no losses on landlord invest thank you very much appreciate that uh, mike thanks for the information and then uh, if you want to see us kind of a little spreadsheet of the entire list that i made uh, maybe i'll do this again for some other companies uh, in a couple of weeks time that, that i didn't cover but there's a list if you want to take a photo of that screenshot it you can you know do that for your own information but uh returns assets really uh you know kind of on the lower end and then at the top land network and prop land really pumping out those high uh i think high returns crowd property too unbolted also so cufflink also decent return 6.78 percent but generally 
Sorry about that. Generally pretty good statistics, especially with these losses. This is what we want to keep an eye on here, because if we lose capital, that's obviously the worst outcome that we can get from a peer-to-peer -peer lending investment. And uh, long may it continue that these losses stay low. Nice to see Stephen Hell is is here off the golf course. What did you uh, score today? If you got under an 80, you'll get a special clap from me from Nottingham. Good, nice, go great, great day for golf, huh? Hopefully not raining. Anyway, uh, if you can hit that thumbs up, if you're enjoying the content, please do so. It helps the channel, believe it or not. It's a small thing that I asked from you. Um, so why did I not put Lone Pad on that list? You know, honestly, number one, I just ran out of time and I thought Lone Pad just, uh, their statistics doesn't really show too much as far as historical returns because they are fixed, sort of a fixed um, return company. As you can see here, Classic right now is paying 3.1% and premiums 4.3%. So it's really been hovering, you know, on average, I think we lowest we've seen on Classic is 3% up to three and a half percent years ago and then premium 4.5 percent max and then down to four percent so you can kind of figure out what your average is on there but they're another company that has a zero capital loss to date and a very very low default rate um, for the amount of loans that they've written and now I, I when i was on their website too you shot an 86. Stephen, that's not bad. Uh, 86. You don't get a clap, but, you know, keep on trucking. Next time you get an 80, we'll give you a clap. Down here, you can see, what do I use to say about LoanPad on Trustpilot? Now, you know, I don't always think that Trustpilot is the best place to read about a company because those reviews can be put in by anybody. But I wanted to go ahead and just kind of take a look with that feedback because, I, you know, I'm a fan. I think LoanPad is just really doing really uh, offering a phenomenal product at the moment. Not financial advice, of course, but you know, I'm a fan. 4.7 out of five stars. The top rated peer-to-peer -peer platform, Heather Tomlinson. Um, just have good reviews, can't complain. Does what it does. Great customer service. I wanted to find some bad ones. I wanted to see what people were saying the negative that they didn't like about LoanPad. This guy's, guy's name is Joe Liam Rubbish. This is why I don't know if I put any weight into these Trustpilot reviews. I know your name, last name isn't Rubbish, but he says they're clear and simple to use peer-to-peer -peer platform. The returns, however, are pretty underwhelming when, when, when compared to similar sites. Yeah, so this person, sorry, Joe Liam, but you pro obviously haven't done your research because if you do compare LoanPad's product to a comparable product their returns are actually where they should be sure if you compare them to blend network not going to be the same because it's not the same product let's go ahead and look at uh a couple of other bad ones see if there are any other ones they offer an in an inducement to review on trust pilot leave a review have a chance to win 25 pounds okay hard to understand the website staff were not helpful on the web chat took too long to invest funds i don't think that uh the website is hard to understand it's probably one of the easier ones to use so only a couple of uh bad reviews let's look at the poor ones louis if you're watching check these out not sure how they'll perform investing this is april 2020 uh this person had trouble with verification documents this person said, I can't invest with a debit card, blah, blah, blah. Not even a year old. So this is old 2019. So only a couple of two star and one stars, which out of 489, if they're real reviews, well done. Um, going back to this article about emotionally draining investing. I've been kind of going through a little bit of this myself at the moment. And I don't know if you can relate to what I'm going to talk about here. I know the dog certainly can't because she just doesn't do any emotional thinking when it comes to that. But 
um, I've kind of been sitting on the fence with investing, which goes against my, it goes against what I really should be doing, which is to stay invested and don't try to time the market because timing the market is absolutely impossible, I believe. But that doesn't stop my emotional brain from doing things and making decisions that I shouldn't be doing. Now, um, after seeing what's happened in the stock market in the last couple of weeks, the troubles that we've had, uh, I, I just don't know what the right call is for investing. Um, if you're trying to pick individual stocks, it's very difficult. And then our trusty U.S. equity Vanguard tracker has taken a bit of a hit, which I don't think is a bad thing because you can get in at a discount. You can see here, 14th of September, we were at 749 pounds and 75p. And if we go historically, looking back a little bit, we are down from the 785 range. So you can get a bit of a discount uh, from just the 16th of August, 17th of August, 18th of August range, 785 pounds, so a 40 pounds discount. And um, if you look at the trading 2-1 account, 2-1-2 account, we've kind of been hovering here around 18,899. And my gut is saying, I just think there's some trouble brewing out there in the financial markets. And do I want to try investing this 6,439 pounds at the moment into something that I think, because this is a trading account, this is not necessarily a five to 10 year buy and hold a certain stock. We're moving in and out of stocks in this portfolio. And that is very emotional drain, emotionally draining. And I don't really know what the answer is because um, the, these USA inflation numbers came out higher than what people are expecting. They expected the inflation to go negative, ended up being 0.1% higher on the CPI results. I think we're going to see a similar thing probably happen in the UK when the UK inflation numbers come out. And I'm just seeing this squeeze on the real estate and the property market with these high interest rates are slowing the property market down. I know I see it personally. Um, it's happening. And then there's talk about the Federal Reserve raising interest rates up to 75 to 100 basis points, which is three quarters of a percent to 1% higher. If you put another, you know, half a percent or a percent on top of mortgage rates, it's going to affect the housing market and, you know, bring things to a screeching halt. So, um, there has been a bit of an emotional decision going on and this trading account here is, and this is why I tell people, if you don't have experience picking stocks, don't even get involved in this type of stock picking because it's, um, it can be a, a bit addictive. It can be a bit like a drug because investing in these index trackers, right? They're boring as hell. You put your money in and this is the way it should be. Stick your money in. Whenever you can, keep building it up, cost average in whenever you have money and you don't do anything. You don't trade. You don't try to move in and out of them. You just hold them long term. And if you do that, historically, if we look back, let's go back to, say, uh, 2000, I don't know, 17. Yeah, if we can. Could we go back to 2017? It's going to let us do that. Start date. Come on, let me go back. Let me go back to 2017, August 1st. If we go back that far, oh goodness, it's going to take a while. Hang on. You can see that price lower, lower, down into the 600s, lower, 600s into the 500s. Keep going down in the 400s, back to the 5s. You can see it in the 4s, down into the 3s. Down there, where was it? 399, it went 1.393, 24th of December, 2018. This is the smart way to invest people. If you're not skilled, you don't know what you're doing. Okay, 39381 back in August. So big jump, big jump. But I have succumbed to the problems of emotional investing that comes with trying to pick stocks and get that rush trying to get these 49% returns, 30%, 64% returns. You're just not going to get that in your index tracker in months. 
it's not going to happen. It defies the stock market the way it should be in the average of you know, 10, 11% per year on the S&P 500. So uh, I'm having a little bit of an emotional, uh, not a breakdown, but tough decisions on, is it even worth continuing along with a portfolio like this, given the fact that I think that the stock market could take a hit at some point because of what's going on in the economy? It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, when this happens. And then sitting on the sidelines with six and a half grand in, a, in an account is not doing anything except getting eroded by inflation. Um, you know, and I, I'm sure some of you are probably having maybe some of the same thoughts, like where do you put your money now? The savings rates are pretty horrible. Let's look at money supermarket. See what's going on. What, what can we get? What can we get these days? Check out my connection. I do accept your cookie, cookies, Martin. Let's see what you get. Savings account. Can you give me anything good? Show me something. Top easy access savings account. Come on. Show me something good. Look, here we go. Zopa. Look at that. Zopa is the top. It's 1.85%. That's all you're going to get. You can get nationwide direct, but these have got limits. 1,500 pounds, max deposits. I just can't be bothered with that. Uh, Al Rayan Bank, don't even know what you are. Expected profit, 2.1%. So look, bank savings is worthless. You can't leave your money just sat like this. So uh, I think for most people out there, just putting that into an index tracker and forgetting about it for 10 years or whenever you need the money is is definitely the best approach for me uh, having a hard time doing that at the moment and um, thinking well maybe there's some other ways it is property is putting some more into loan pad the way to go uh, I, I don't want to over diversify and put too much into peer, to, peer lending because it makes me nervous I've gotten burned before in some of the companies that have gone bankrupt so do you go with the equity tracker do you go with that do you go with a uh, with loan pad, I think all of these are valid places to put money. I mean, um, what about buy to let properties in the north of England where you can get maybe a six or seven percent yield on places up there? You're not going to get the same appreciation, but I don't know to be honest, I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. I'm kind of in the same boat as all of you, but I do leave my other investments as is. You know, I've still got the index trackers, I think 70 percent. My stock portfolio is in is in that U.S. equity index tracker, uh, which I expect again the markets to take a dive at some point, which would be then a valid time to kind of come in and buy some more at that point. But how long do you sit and wait? You know, we could be sitting on this stock market being propped up by federal governments in different places in the world for many, many months or years longer, which means. If you're getting a little older like I am, if I'm getting close to 50, how long can I really afford to be sat in cash? Uh, this is not a huge amount, but uh, if you do have more money, how long do you really want to be sat in cash waiting, what, watching this getting eroded by inflation? So that was just the thought I was having today about when I read this article, you know, and it said less emotionally draining than the stock market. I do find that to be a really valid point it does get emotionally draining so i don't know what you think about that but let me know in the comments it's kind of babbling around how long we've been going at 19 uh 43 minutes okay we're going to wrap it up in a minute mm -mm -mm. UK inflation fell from 9.9 to 10 point, from 10.1 to 9.9 percent. Okay, so heading in the right direction, still not good. LEP in France is 4.6 percent tax-free, backed by the French state. That's not bad. Dave says, "What about buying a good income company like FSFL?" and holding them forever, taking the dividends tax-free in the ISA, obviously not all your money, several 
pick several such good solid dividend players. Yeah, I mean, I hear this argument too a lot about dividend stocks. Um, if they if the company has a good history of long term dividend payments being stable, I think that's a valid way to go. But you also do risk uh, you do risk the drawdown that when the markets do finally take a poo poo, which they will. Um, what happens then to your dividend stock price is getting a 3% dividend uh, going to help you if that stock really gets hit hard when the markets decline. So, you know, if we take a look at this fund that David kindly suggested to us is FSFL, which is a UK stock. We can see here we've had highs of 127 which we're close to now. And we've also seen dips down here at 93.6. So this is not an unvolatile stock. I mean, that is almost a, uh, what's that, a 30, not quite a 30% drop, but you can see there is that volatility risk. And I think one of the problems for investors is we try to avoid these drawdowns um, you know, where we might come in up here at 115 and then watch this thing go down to one, uh, to 96. And then, yes, we're getting a dividend on the stock. I do understand that. But, uh, the drawdowns are what makes me uncomfortable with the markets at the moment. So looking for really, maybe is there alternative ways? Now you do get a 5.6% dividend yield on say that foresight solophon but i don't know anything about that company i'd have to dig into it and research it and do i trust myself enough to bet on a stock like that um probably not probably not. i don't know anything about the solar um sector but i mean yeah that that is one, one way to do it with the dividend yield but again i mean if the stock market corrects 30 40 percent and holding a stock with a good dividend really doesn't help you much still open to those drawdowns. So, which as an investor is what we're trying to really avoid. And peer to peer lending does take care of that to some degree because you're not going to hopefully lose capital if you invest in the right companies. But having thoughts and feelings about that, and it's interesting to uh, read your comments. Let me see what, what else you've got here. Hang on. Yeah, Mike says LEP not much use for most of us not in France. Yeah, uh, Dave put money in legal in general then when they're around two forty. Yeah, I mean you can pick them if you can get it right, but again, I don't think a lot of people are experienced enough to pick out their own stocks. I find it difficult. And the amount of research I do is pretty extensive. Uh, Alan says lots of new peer to peer loans this week prop land, bland, landlord invest, soma, quadis, and much more in crowd property. That's cool. Isn't your whole strategy with crypto to ignore the drawdowns and invest long term and no dividend? Absolutely. Yeah, when it comes to crypto, it sure is because uh, fundamentally I have a view that. Um, certainly Bitcoin will reach the target prices that I think they will. No guarantee, of course. Um, and you're right, it should be the same for stock, stock investing. The problem is when you go cash and you think, so if I was sitting on the sidelines with cash for crypto, would I necessarily go in right now if I thought that there was a possibility crypto was going to draw down? in the next six months to a year, I'd find it very difficult, especially if I had a good amount of cash uh, sitting on the sidelines. And that is the problem. Like, when do you go in? I went into crypto at a point where now it makes absolutely no sense to sell out for me personally. But I think that's one of the issues a lot of you know, retail investors have is when do you actually go in to stocks? So, but I think, yeah, you're, you're exactly right though. It should be 
ignore the drawdowns, invest long term. That's why I think index trackers are good because you could just put it in one product, not look at your stocks, not look at your individual stocks. But again, emotionally, this is like a more of an emotional roller coaster, I think, for most investors. Go, go through, myself included. Anyway, uh, don't forget next Thursday, there he is, George Huntley. Sorry for poking you, George. From the Money Platform, he's going to be live with me. We we'll do a Q&A session. Then um, other guests in the future. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoy your weekend. It's Thursday. It comes around so fast. Absolutely so quick. Uh, appreciate you being here. If you can hit that thumbs up before you leave, I would appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Crypto is following the stock markets and likely to drop. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Again, it's when do you go in if you're sitting in cash? Do you wait? How long do you wait for? But I'll see you next uh, Thursday, if not before, with George Huntley from The Money Platform. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for being here. Take care, and I'll see you soon.